Today's seminar is a uh, presentation, Dr. Rod Droy from uh, Rio Tinto and his uh, colleague, Stefan, um, talking about Sigma Pi. Okay. Right, thank you. Okay, well, I guess point number one is for most of you, you'll say, well, Sigma Pi, what the heck's that? Never heard of it. That's the point of this exercise, is to just leave you when you walk away from here with some understanding of what it actually is. The reason, uh, Steph is, is based in Wales, in Cardiff, and he's coming for this because he's worked on it, he knows what it's about, and it's someone other than me that you can talk to if you need to. He's local, sort of. So if I'm not available, please use the contact information for Steph for that. Now, um, what is this thing? Well, if you can imagine, you take a mixing bowl and you toss into it video game programming and then a copy of Perry's Chemical Engineering Handbook and a copy of Coulson and Richardson Volume 1 for good measure and you mix it all up together, that's what you get. It's a video game for pipe flow and heat transfer. Um, the rest of it I think you can read for yourselves. There's just one point that I want to emphasize which is it's not a computational fluid dynamic package in the conventional sense. That's where you, you chop the flow domain up into a whole bunch of tiny little um, volumes and you look for swirl flows and stuff like that. It's not doing any of that. It's only doing plug flow calculations down pipes of one form or another. You can set how, where those cuts are, but you can't do anything about profiles across them. That's an, that's why it's engineering calculations, not computational fluid dynamic calculations. Can you a yes, please. Um, I mean, theoretically, a uniform velocity profile across the pipe. As if you're calculating friction factors or whatever, that's the assumption you're making. Yes, it, it, in effect, it means the same thing. But when you do, if your flow velocities are very low, of course, it will know that you're in laminar flow and the heat transfer calculations, it's everything you, you do from Perry's or Coulson or Richardson, yeah. Okay, now at the most basic level, what it is, is you lay down a fluid source of some type, you instruct what kind of fluid is in it, what the temperature and what the pressure is. Then you lay down some kind of pipeline system. This is just a very simple one with two bits, one in mild steel and one in copper. And then you lay down a fluid sink. And that's just a constant pressure black hole into which the fluid disappears. And then you tell it, right, tell me what flow I'm going to get. That's the simplest level of what this thing does. Um, you can select your own pipe sizes, either standard sizes or custom sizes and you can select default or user-defined materials of construction. For example, if you wanted something with a, an unusual roughness factor, you define a new version of mild steel, assign the roughness factor you want, give it a name, and then use that material to make the pipe out of. You can put lining and cladding on pipes, and what it will do is calculate the thermal gradients um, radially across the pipe out to the environment. Now, sometimes it's not um, the natural environment that the pipe is interacting with. Sometimes it's part of a process, and uh, what we define is you've either got um, flue gas type of hot gases, or you've got condensing or vaporizing steam, or you've got cooling water. And those are different external pipe environments you can create, and I'll demonstrate the use of that in a little bit. Now, of course, um, straight pipe sections are not enough. You need a few other bits and pieces, and that's just a, a quick sort of graphical overview of um, what you get in terms of other options that you can put in there. Again, don't worry too much about this, because when I do the live demonstration in a little bit, I'll walk you through how these things are actually um, accessed. Now, when it comes to fluid types, that's the list of fluids currently available. Now, that's nothing like the list you'll find in um, Aspen Plus or you know, all the other commercial things. Um, this is really, it's a very limited list, but it's good enough for a whole bunch of basic things. That list is growing, and I'll talk about that later on in terms of the future development path. But this thing is not intending to compete with in, in any sense with those commercial simulators that you normally use. 
what it is doing is it's combining the three-dimensionality of objects with this type of calculation. And as I say, this list is limited, but it is growing. And in fact, um, one of these liquid chlorine, there was a particular user request a few months back because that wasn't in the list and it was included because a user requested it. That's doable in future, of course. If you need something, let me know. I'll put it in. Now, I'm going to skip over this one because I'm going to do a live demonstration that will cover the how to use it part. The in principle thing that it's showing you here is if you do something, you calculate something, it's using a color scale to paint the walls of the pipe with the process values. So if you, you're looking at pressure or temperature or heat transfer coefficients or whatever, you'll see a different color gradient that tells you the result of the calculation. Now, there's always um, somebody in the room who wants to get into detail about how the calculations are actually performed. Um, I don't propose to go through that, just to let you know that that discussion is there and perhaps it's something for a different time and place. As I said, it's all the stuff you get when you dig out Perry and Coulson and Richardson and a couple of mechanical engineering texts for the boiling and condensing heat transfer. Um, it should be consistent with the sorts of things that are, are used in undergraduate teaching. Um, well, so, yeah, I mean, any questions, we can look at that, but I don't want to spend too much time on it. This is an actual example just to show you how it has been used. Um, this is a pump filtrate line from the Hope Downs 4 mine up in um, the northern part of Western Australia. There was a problem with this circuit and the question was, is it performing according to design? They had um, all the pump curve parameters and the line layout and whatnot. And the question was, is there something wrong with the line or is it something else? So it was set up and simulated in order to function, I guess, as a, a, a one tool in this kind of forensic process investigation, which is something that plant engineers often have to do because real plants keep doing things they're not supposed to do and you've got to figure out why. So that's, that's an example. And then um, it has built into it a thing called uh, a quick start menu. Now, the, the, the idea behind that is if you're presented with a new piece of software, now, unfortunately, because we're all human, any new piece of software is vaguely irritating because you don't know where things are and what the buttons look like to make it do certain things. Um, we've all programmed into our brains that we know where Excel's buttons are because we use it a lot. But there's nothing particularly logical about the way Microsoft laid it out. We just got used to it. It's the same deal, but what these things are is it gives you a way, instead of coming new into something and then having to learn to construct something before you can solve something, it gives you a shortcut for all of that. You can select from the quick start menu where you've got just a handful of choices and you can create something and get going. And it's often easier to do that and then modify it than to build something from scratch. So these are just the examples of the quick start options that you, you will find in the application. Uh, the development profile, this thing is um, in, in quite a strong growth phase at the moment. This year, several major new features have been introduced, as you can see there. Uh, equations of state, it, it's offering just a couple of those for interacting components. Um, and it's doing refrigeration cycles. And so the most recent one is this um, fire water thing. Perhaps the more interesting bit is where is it going from here? Now, as I mentioned, additional fluids are coming. The, um, the intention is that at least to C10, um, we'd like to have a reasonably competent set of hydrocarbon options. That's likely to come um, sometime early next year. From there, the intention is to go into solids handling and conveying, in other words, bulk powder feeders, uh, conveyors, and um, pneumatic systems so that you can do things like put coal, pulverized coal in and piggyback that on the gas flow that's, that's going through there. And then there's absolutely no reason why chemical reactions can't be thrown in, that if you have certain conditions where combustion makes sense or gasification or whatever, um, it's logical to do that. But of course, this is all going to move 
that's where it's headed in time. So that just gives you an idea of, of the intention certainly behind the development. Now, um, as the, one of the earlier slides told you, this thing is a genuine free application. It's, uh, it is restricted to Windows. You can't run it on an iPad. Um, but to get it, the procedure is pretty darn simple. The first thing is if you go to the website and you click on that blue button, it opens this, this page over on this side. Now, there's just one thing you need to know about it, which is that for your machine to manage and display three-dimensional objects, it needs a Microsoft utility called XNA, which is their general games 3D um, programming system. It's just a download from Microsoft that uh, once you've got it, that's it. You never have to worry about it again. Then you can download the actual software by clicking on that one. Now, it uses this thing called Click Once, which if you don't know what that is, um, it's a Microsoft system that um, once it's installed, it has a rather nice feature that every time you start it, if you have an internet connection, it'll check if there's an update. If there is, it'll offer it to you. Do you want it? Yes or no. Um, that's a good way of staying abreast of updates. Um, if you don't want that, or, and in fact, um, some antivirus software will make your life difficult. I've got a Surface Pro myself with Norton's on it. And when I do a test download, I have to negotiate with Norton's because it keeps waving the finger at me, sort of um, school mamish style, saying, no, 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 you sure? I don't trust that. You should know. But, okay. So, Norton's shouldn't be so tight ass about it. But anyway. Um, now, if that is a problem for any reason, there is another option down here. You can download the MSI installer, which will essentially do the same thing. The problem is it won't automatically look for updates for you. You could drift behind and not know it. But some people do prefer that. The network administrator at Monash University in Melbourne, for example, that's his preference. He likes to put it on the network using the MSI installer. It's, it's up to your network administration how you want to deal with that. All right, then the final bit is if you scroll down on this page, you'll see a table that looks like this. Now, this contains a whole bunch of PowerPoint files. The first one is a very, very gentle introduction, which if you've been through this presentation, you probably don't even need it. Um, but it's for, for starting you off gently. The second one is not actually a worked example at all. It's just a compendium of available features. And the idea is just let the pictures do the talking, walk through it. And if you, in the back of your mind, you remember, I saw a picture of that, the background changed color or whatever. You can come back to it and find it really easily. The rest of them are worked examples that depending what you're interested in, you can go through it step by step and it'll walk you through every bit of, of what you need to know for that. Okay, so that's how you get hold of it. Um, there's also a Facebook user forum. If that is your preferred way of interacting with the world. That's fine. If you just click on there, you can, uh, you can choose to join the group and get updates. You can, if you have a problem, you can post something and see if anybody else can help you with it. That's just, the, I guess, the way that um, things get done these days. All right. Now, we've come to the end of what I might call the boring PowerPoint bit. And what I'd like to do now is walk you through a live demonstration of how it actually works.